He now to react. 2024 Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, your thoughts as we approach this arraignment on uh, Tuesday in Manhattan. This is a dangerous moment in the country, Steve. We're skating on thin ice as a country because, you know what, we're already deeply divided. I could imagine nothing worse to take us to the breaking point than the ruling party in this country using police power to stop its lead political opponent. And I say this as somebody who is in this race running against Donald Trump to fix that very cancer. Yes, it might be more convenient for me or for others running against Trump if he wasn't in this race, but this goes beyond politics. This is about first principles. We are not some banana republic where the people in power get to arrest their political opponents, or at least we shouldn't be. Yet I wake up and that's the America I see today from Donald Trump being indicted to even the likes of Douglas Mackey being convicted, facing 10 years in prison for the high crime of actually making fun of his opposition <laughs> and the know. supporters of Clinton. That is not the America that I learned to pledge allegiance to as a kid. It's not the America that my parents came to or you came to. Yet that is the America in which we live today. And it's amazing, isn't it? The gaslighting. I mean, the, just the way that they're the ones saying they're standing up for the rule of law, even as they blatantly abuse it. Of course, that's the oldest trick in the book is you use a different label, say our democracy, say rule of law as many times as you can precisely to violate that rule. It's an Orwellian trick. It's an old one in the book. But, Steve, I think we in the conservative movement, frankly, in the pro-American movement, need to graduate yeah. beyond just seeing this problem with clear eyes. That is a, a big service that Donald Trump did for this country in the four years that he served, frankly, even all the way through this day of exposing this administrative rot. But we have to find our way to solutions. And you have a, an administrative mm -hmm. police state that is so entrenched in this country that if we're going to revive it, we're actually going to have to take, I think, somewhat radical steps to shut it down, to actually solve the problem. That's where I, I'm focused. That's where I think our movement needs to be focused, yes. is actually moving towards hard solutions. That will not be easy, well, but that's what I'm here to deliver. Well, let's talk exactly about that, uh, because you've released a plan today. Um, which I noticed earlier, um, it's pretty, it's, there's, this is a pretty uh, serious list. Uh, your plan to end political weaponization of the federal administrative state is just, uh, you know, the, the, the highlights. Shut down and replace the FBI, shut down and replace the IRS, pardon all federal defendants prosecuted based on political motives, hold Congress accountable for using U.S. taxpayer dollars as hush money for sexual harassment claims against members of Congress. You have a lot of support for that one. And publish the Jeffrey Epstein client list. Um, there's a lot there, uh, Vivek. Where do you want to start? Well, I want to start with applying justice even-handedly. And I think that you start with the administrative cancer that is in the FBI, even in institutions like the IRS. Steve, you can't reform mm -hmm. those institutions. I think that's a mistake that past presidents, even President Trump made in thinking that incremental reform is sufficient. It is not. When you have an administrative cancer that runs so deep, there's exactly one answer. The U.S. president is constitutionally empowered to deliver it. You have to shut it down and, if necessary, build something new from scratch to take its place. That's the only way you solve a problem like the one that we have in the federal law enforcement apparatus that is the FBI. And I have both the constitutional conviction and also the ability to do it in terms of moral authority to take that vision of identifying the deep state problem, but actually solve it, go further than Trump ever went. Yes, Trump is now even personally suffering the consequence, but I think we need to take that agenda to the next level and actually solve that problem and use constitutional presidential power, such as the pardon power, to actually correct for some of the mistakes made over the course of the last several years to say that any defendant who was actually convicted when someone else, when many other people of similar situations were not charged with those crimes, that's evidence of a politicized justice system and to actually pardon those defendants. I think those are the kinds of steps that will be controversial, but that I'm willing to go the distance to make based on first principle and with moral authority that can actually unify this country, Steve. Vivek, uh, very strong words. By the way, totally endorse that point about shutting things down and building anew. That is a, gr a basic principle in the private sector. If you start trying to build on something that is rotten, it's a complete disaster. So uh, completely with you on that one. Uh, great to see you tonight. Thank you so much. All right. With more now, here is Harmeet Dillon, whose firm is part of the legal team.